Hello and welcome everyone to my Let's Play Tomb Raider 2, this is Dogbase 115. Oh boy, once again no time for introduction as this bloodthirsty hawk appears. Which is actually a new type of enemy, exciting, yay. Okay, so that was a rather hilarious cutscene. I mean, it was cool but also funny in sort of way. <laughs> Lara just survived, casually survived a plane crash, losing both her wings like that. Oh boy. What's actually interesting is that she because of the plane crash she did not actually reach her destination and that is the monastery of brother Cheng Bar Kang that she talked to uh, in the diving area and talking about new types of enemies they're gonna be the snow leopards or leopards I'm not sure how was the correct pronunciation but yeah um these things are uh -huh. basically as tough as your tigers in in China basically but uh, they look really fluffy, cute and cuddly, more than the tigers did, so I kind of feel sorry for killing them. Okay, so basically, yeah, um, the monastery is where Lara is headed, but because of the plane crash we get to play an extra level, so I'm not going to complain. And the level is being just called Tibetan Food Hills, which is a rather vague description. I mean, where exactly are we? Tibet is huge. Um, okay. So this might be a bit counterintuitive. You just have to break that glass and then just jump onto the ledge over here. If you want, you can just grab this. It serves as a ladder and just shimmy to the right. But I find this shortcut much more handy. Okay. Now, some of you might recognize the following area from the demo videos that play if you're lingering in the main menu. That's the hut that Lara will fight a couple of cultists. Uh, next to, but the problem is that we can't reach it just yet. We have this huge canyon to get over. Uh, over. Okay, now basically, it might look really confusing, but um, there are two ways of getting through this huge abyss, abyss over here. Now, there is one way which I always thought it's some sort of secret and I didn't understand. And then there's a shortcut, which I always assumed is the way we're supposed to do it, but apparently we are not. Okay, so the shortcut I mentioned is basically just going on the ledge over here, which you can just climb up because uh, it's a ladder, Yeah, in case you fall down into the water. And uh, it's basically just making a running jump on the steep slope over there, which will then drag Lara over to the left and to the ledge with the large health pack. So we could just take a shortcut like that, but you will take some damage. But yeah, this is always the way I assumed we have to do this. Or we could do it the more, you know, honest sort of way, the way it was intended, and we can explore this cave over here. But if you take the shortcut, do not worry, you will not miss a single pickup or enemy. You will just completely avoid a couple of traps and uh, pass on some excitement, I guess. Yeah. 
and this is another ladder which is completely pointless but I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with standing jump because those icicles can pierce Lara thankfully we did the jump just right so we ended up on the small corner and they did not connect awesome okay now yeah as I mentioned I'm gonna be using Uzis uh, in this level primarily on human enemies and automatic pistols I'm gonna use them on animals like hawks or well not hawks but the snow leopards okay now if you go over here you can just get another teasing image of the hut and if that wasn't enough there's also the first secret just over here it, it's pretty much the ultimate tease really okay but let's just go down here for a while So yeah, all of this can be completely avoided if you will just make a running jump onto the steep slope and get carried away to the large health pack. Simple as that. So yeah, luckily these are rather easy to avoid. They cover only a relatively small area of the square. But this one managed to scratch us. Well, that's just odd. Uh, we're just gonna have to make do. Okay, but one thing I wanna well make very clear before we get any further is that um, as you might have noticed uh, we're gonna find a red scooter a snow scooter that we're gonna drive which is gonna be great fun however there's something I learned during my trial run we're gonna be able to either shoot enemies by using our weapons or we can save up the ammunition and just ride over them uh, using our snowmobile or snow scooter however you prefer to call it however if you run over your enemies uh, you're not gonna get a kill count into your statistics and seeing as I'm not using a grenade launcher just to get these statistics right I'm also not gonna be running over any enemies so as to avoid any confusion in my statistics so that's a terrible shame I know but I guess I have to make that sacrifice now this hawk is getting on my nerves let's try and get a better vantage point at the bastard He's down. I was kind of hoping he would drop into the water. Oh well. And the water must be insanely cold, but Lara can just somehow take it. I have no idea how, but she's just that badass. Okay, now. Now it's just the case of climbing up over here, even though these ledges look like they're gonna make Lara slide. They really are rather stable, so that's cool. And finally, we're gonna get into a proper fight with our Uzis. So looking forward to that. I mean, the last time we used them was on sharks, I think. And there we go. These are actually the cultists. Uh, the Black Flame cult. Basically, Marco Bartoli's thugs. And I guess Marco Bartoli is not too happy about Lara crushing his plane. And actually, talking about the plane, you might have noticed in the cutscenes, and hell, even in the offshore rig level, there's some sort of painting of a woman on the plane. And I genuinely have no idea what it is. I never found any information on the internet on what it is. So it might be the case they just decided to put some early Lara concept in there. Because the developers were fond of it. And maybe it's just supposed to be some sort of generic sexy babe on a plane or something. I, I genuinely have no idea. Or it could be Marco Bartoli's mother. Who knows. Now this hut over here. This hut holds a switch which will open our way to the level exit. Once again... We are presented with another tease, and we can even peek through the window, and thanks to the glitch, we can even see the small health pack in there, and there are quite a few more goodies there. But half of the level is going to be spending looking for a key to this bloody hut. Now, oh my god, this music, I love it so much. I believe it's even going to play during the credits. It's just so very cool. But okay, as I said, there's going to be a first enemy we can run over using our snow scooter. But we're not going to do that. Instead, let's snipe him from a distance, shall we? Okay, that's it. And these guys, they're so very tough. They can take so much damage. Even with M16, it takes a while to kill them. Thankfully, we have over 600 shots, which should get us through the level without any serious difficulties. Okay, and now we're entering a very favorite area of mine, but before you get too excited and, you know, just use the ramps to have fun with the snow scooter, you do have to dismount, which is a terrible shame. 
that's basically for us to get a couple of obstacles out of the way. Which I find a terribly annoying level design. You want to have fun with a snowmobile. You don't want to move blocks. But that's exactly what we're going to be doing. It's a terrible design. Such amazing music is playing and all we're going to do is just move these couple of blocks. Oh my god. It's infuriating. Now, as for the ramps themselves, um, there's actually two ways to um, get through them, basically. There is a short way, which is extremely difficult, and then there's the longer, more reliable sort of way. I'm gonna try and illustrate both of them. Okay, let's move it even more, so that we'll get them completely out of the way, because we're gonna be using this passage twice. Yeah. Uh, as I said, half of the level is going to be spent just looking for the key from that hut, which means we are also going to have to return to the hut. And no, there's no clever shortcut that will just lead us straight back to the hut. Everything we're going to go through from this point until we find the key, we're going to have to go through all over again just to return. So I kind of love and hate this level at the same time. It has some great and poor decisions in it. But you get the impression you're in some sort of wilderness, so that's kind of cool. No longer in a civilized area. Okay, so back to the scooter. Where did we park that? Oh, okay, by the first ramp. Okay, so I'm just gonna try and illustrate two ways to do this. Okay, I was worried for a while, this is actually a large gap. Now basically the idea is to sort of use this ramp to get on the ramp on the left then go around the entire circuit until we reach this small middle thin ramp and get into the cave over there. However, by doing a carefully aimed uh, run you can actually land precisely on top of this ramp. But this is extremely difficult and it would take some time. So it's actually, unless you're really good at this, it's just faster and more reliable to go around like this, the way it was intended. And plus this is more fun. Okay, so yeah, this is the ramp that we jump, jumped over, but if you're very skilled you can just jump straight on top of it. So I can imagine that'd be useful in some sort of glitch-free speed run. Now there are two ramps we can use, the one on the right and left, however the one on the left is, well, bigger. So let's utilize that whilst aiming for the middle spot. That should be the easiest jump. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Now yeah, there's gonna be plenty of fun we're gonna have with a snowmobile, so... Let's, but it's not very reliable, so that's the reason why I'm probably gonna be saving more often than usually in this particular level. Okay, now let's park the thing over here. If you're for some reason confused with the controls, you can dismount from it by uh, holding the jump button and then pressing either left or right, depending on which direction you want Lara to dismount. So let's say you're surrounded by enemies and you don't want to run over them, you dismount into the direction you prefer. Okay, so there's a very, rather invisible lever over here that open up a uh, door made out of wooden planks. So yeah, once again, we can't just rush through this area. We have to dismount to do something. Okay, we snipe the bastard from the distance, and then there should be another one uh, that ideally would run over, not, not with this glitch. Okay, they're both down. You know what? I'm first gonna investigate... Oh boy! If we would have... Keep kept sliding, we'd die. I wouldn't like that at all. Okay, so that's the first pickup, and let's return to the snowmobile. But even these guys, uh, I think I already mentioned this in the case of thugs, but I love how the same enemy has so much variety in, in his design. The thugs are the same, but look completely different. And these guys, these hooded thugs, they also have varied designs, which is pretty cool. Okay. Now I think this is the only level 
in Tomb Raider 2 where there are going to be snowmobiles, which is a terribly wasted potential. But they kind of uh, addressed the issue back uh, in the Golden Mask expansion. We're going to be seeing more of that action, uh -huh. so that's kind of cool. But yeah, come to think of it, this is the first and last level we're going to be seeing these. Okay. Now let me just save here. I want to show you something. Okay. <clears throat> now, basically, this particular area is great fun. But, let's see, we have uh, 12 kills so far, and now we're going to ideally run over three enemies in a very stylish sort of way. Whoa! Wasn't that just badass? Well, let's just take a look at our statistics. We have still 12 kills, so none of these enemies actually counted. And this is exactly the reason I'm not going to do it in such a badass way. No, I'm gonna have to reload and keep dismounting and... Oh boy, it's gonna be a nightmare. Okay, let's carefully dismount here because we're not gonna have much space to maneuver. And once again onto our M16 so we can snipe these guys from the distance. Because we don't want to get into an agile Uzi fight with no space to maneuver, that'd be kind of pointless. And none of these guys drop anything, which just sort of reinforces me even more in the idea that we're just supposed to run over them. We're not supposed to be dismounting them. Okay. And now back to the snowmobile. This is really un unexciting, but yeah. I just want you to be aware of it if, uh, if you really want to get the statistics right. But seriously, um... Whilst I'm doing all this, uh, going through all this trouble to so sort of uh, give you a reliable uh, insight into the total kill statistic, uh, I highly encourage you to just, you know, have fun with a grenade launcher, uh, have fun with uh, running over enemies with a snowmobile, and just not really give a damn about the kill statistics in this game because they just don't work right. But I'm gonna stick by the statistics just to make this uh, walk through more believable. Okay, now both secrets have been rather in a plain sight, haven't they? But as soon as we pick the second dragon up, there should be a couple of leopards in here. Oh yeah. Who's a cute boy? <laughs> Who's a cute boy? And now we're gonna shoot them, that's just horrible. Okay, let's just use a small health pack because huh, so much action is still waiting for us. Okay, I find the automatics to be the ideal weapon on them. Uzis would be a bit too much of a waste. Although saying that, we'd probably never run out considering how much ammunition we have. And now, we're gonna get to explore the bottom of this huge abyss in some time. But later on about that, we're actually gonna reach it from a different path. I find this to be the most time efficient. Whoa! Avalanche! Oh damn it! let me try this again. Okay, Lara, you have another shot at this. One shot at glory, Lara. No more. Let's use the turbo! Okay, we did it, with the help of our turbo. Uh, actually, the same principle as with the boats in Venice. If you press the control key, you will make the snowmobile go faster, and which will also result in Lara taking a damage if she bumps into anything, whilst the turbo mode is active. So, yeah, kind of like that. Now, first things first, let's... Uh, yeah, let's dismount here. So there's a very intriguing tunnel for us to explore, and you might actually be thinking, oh great, I'm headed right to a secret, I'm so smart. And no, we're actually headed somewhere where we have to be. Oh yeah. But I think there are two types of Tomb Raider gamers, really. Those that are happy that they actually found a way out of the level, and those that are depressed they found a way out of the level, because they did not find all the secrets. So it's either you're happy because you found a secret, or you're frustrated that you found a secret, because this is not the way out. <laughs> it's funny like that. Okay, and yeah, the letter is kind of a hint. Oh, okay. There's absolutely nothing in the abyss. There would probably be Lara's corpse along with the wreckage of the snowmobile if we would make an awkward turn whilst uh -huh. using the turbo, but thankfully there isn't. And Lara, the locksmith, tells us that this is a drawbridge key, apparently. I haven't seen a drawbridge yet, 
Have you, Lara? It's a mystery we're gonna have to solve. Now, these don't look like it, but these are basically like uh, windows from Venice. But a bit tougher. You can't break them by jumping through them, unlike the huge window at the beginning of the level. You just have to shoot them. Okay. Okay, that's how we carefully trigger it. The level, Lara. Please. Pretty please. Thank you. Okay, and the way, well, where this leads is actually the bottom of the abyss over here that we jumped over just a while ago, where the Jade Dragon was. However, there's still one peculiar pickup that we're gonna get. A pickup that I'm not particularly fond of, considering I'm not gonna use a grenade launcher, but it's a pickup, you have to have them all. However, this is cool because it also triggers the appearance of three snow leopards. Oh boy, kitty kitty, good kitty. No, 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 bad kitty. Oh, thank you. Okay, that was intense. And now we can just, you know, climb on either way. But I don't think we can make that sort of running jump. So let's just climb up using this way. So yeah, you can descend into the canyon and kill the leopards while picking up the grenades just after you get the second secret, but I don't see the point seeing as we're gonna get here anyway. This vicious piece of music, I believe it was reworked in Tomb Raider Last Revelation to sound sort of more Egyptian, if I'm not mistaken. It starts exactly the same, but then it changes into this whole uh, monumental Egyptian theme. It's pretty cool what they did with it. Okay, awesome. Always nervous about this. And yet, this is actually not the only avalanche in this level. The very next avalanche is going to be in the next room, with a very cool looking frozen lake. Which actually reminds me of... Uh... Oh yeah. Now, we definitely see a drawbridge here, and we're going to address that in a short while. But first, I see a frozen lake here, and beneath it is actually... A key. Now, are we supposed to melt the lake or crush it somehow? Well, it's the latter. We're gonna crush it. And we're gonna do that by triggering an avalanche. But yeah, this actually reminds me of the sort of um, some uh, hints of realism that they introduced in Tomb Raider Last Revelation, where at one point you had to burn away wooden floor just by dropping a torch on it. Basically stu realistic stuff that you would never expect in a Tomb Raider game. Which is why I find Tomb Raider Last Revelation kind of infuriating and confusing as hell. Not my favorite Tomb Raider, I'll be honest. But okay, so this time someone actually bothered to put a warning for... Oh boy, well at least we triggered the music, so I'm not gonna complain. But yeah, someone actually b uh, bothered to put a warning board over here, which is actually kind of cute. Just imagine one of the cultists going like, Oh well, let's put a board up here, just picking up a hammer and slamming it in here. I wonder how long has it been here, and who actually drew this stuff? It's just so very out of place that I'm in love with that particular warning board. And yes, that sounded like... Uh, Cave-in! Well, that's just great, so there's no going back that way. And this can be rather difficult properly. Oh boy. I think I'm gonna take a health back. Okay, go on Lara, punch it. Oh! That was so very close. Oh. And the drawbridge is down, and without another key we can't open it. But we don't need to. So let's not worry about that. First, let's park a snowmobile over here. And we get another chance to be a badass by picking up this key. Let's see, Lara the locksmith tells us it's a hot key, what we've been looking for the entire time. But this is no time to celebrate, because we can die very easily. Oh boy. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. Without warning, a mercenary on a scooter comes and just 
shoots you or runs over you. And says mercs don't have a stopwatch with statistics screen. They don't care if running over people gives them the kill or not. Oh boy. So I'm gonna have to get at this very same spot and come up with a better plan to handle this guy. Okay, Lara, we have another shot. Another shot at glory, come on. Let's see if we can get a better vantage point from which we would not get shot down that easily. Oh boy, this is very embarrassing. Not only can the bastard run over us, he can shoot at us with those insane machine guns attached to his scooter. Oh, finally! Okay, this is brilliant. Now, I know you're probably enjoying this song quite a lot, but we're gonna be hearing it uh, in Tomb Raider at least one more time. However, it can't be said about this one. I really like them both, and yeah, I believe that we've already heard one, it's time for the other. And I think that in the official soundtrack, this song is actually called Lara is a Badass, or something like that. Which is kind of fitting. And yet, we actually have. We can use these to kill our enemies. And if you kill your enemies like this, you will not have any issue with the kill count statistic. So, yeah, do not run over your enemies, just um, use those guns. However, while we want to play with a new cool toy, we still have to use the red one. Because only the red one has the turbo mode by using the control key instead of guns, which allows us to get over gaps like all oh, this one really okay careful now no need to rush oh this music's just brilliant I can imagine the monks in the monastery listening to something like this <laughs> okay Yeah, it's very short, but I, I really love it. Okay, and this might be a bit tricky. Hopefully we will not die. I'd hate to repeat the fight with the bastard again. Come on, Lara. Oh, okay, yes, yes. Careful around here. So, yeah, as I said, we're going all the way through all these corridors and tunnels and ramps to basically reach the hut again. And this can actually get really tricky, get as much run up as you can, and aim for the middle. Oh boy! Okay, okay. And now, make sure you do not use the turbo mode whilst driving forward. Because Lara would jump over the ramp and drop somewhere over here. Which the game would judge is a sufficient distance for the snowmobile to explode with Lara in it. We don't want that, even though it's hilarious. But yeah, and this is as far as we can get with it. So let's say goodbye to the red snowmobile. It was fun having you around, but we're never going to see you again. Well, not in this game anyway, but we are in the Golden Mask expansion. I'm actually really looking forward to that. I'm not as experienced with the Golden Mask expansion levels as with the Call Tomb Raider 2, so that should be fun to watch. Okay, let me just check the kills. I think we're doing well so far, 24. Yeah, we definitely are. There should be 33 enemies, so 9 more to go. And 31 items, by the way. But speaking of items, there are actually going to be 6 pickups in the hut. Yep, we finally have the key for the hut. We can go skiing and just, you know, enjoying our holiday at this luxurious resort. There's there's not even a stove to, to cook beans or something. I mean, the boathouse near Bartoli's hideout had that sort of thing, but... How do they keep warmth in here? Uh -huh. I guess they don't. This is really frustrating and depressing. Uh -huh. Okay, but we have three lovely pickups and double of each, so that's six. And... Oh boy. Now I'm gonna be sad again. This is an ideal situation to use that grenade launcher at. However, I'm not gonna do that because of the statistics. God damn it. And all three of them were just mowed down like that by M16. This gun is just so brilliant. It's insane. Uh -huh. So yeah, the only uh, disadvantage is that you can't really use it whilst jumping around. 
So it's not really good to use at the scooter guys if they already engaged engaged you up close. But if you have a vantage point on those bastards, then there's nothing better than that. Now let me just save here again because things are gonna get really difficult here. There are gonna be three more scooter guys in this level from this point onward. Very close together seeing as this is well, we're nearing the level exit now. Okay, now let me just get a good vantage point over here. Let's see if the safe... well, the bait drop will work. But I can't hear him, so apparently we have to get even closer than that. So let's make a standing jump. Oh, there he is. He's coming from the corner. Okay, okay. This should be enough time for us to kill him. That was so very close! Oh my god! And look at his corpse hanging in the air. Oh, this is too rich. Okay, I'm really happy we got this on the footage doesn't happen often something like this and unfortunately when we uh, uh, I think I got a heart attack right now instead of a mounting animation larger started shooting using the snowmobile I thought something exploded okay whatever um however there's still a tricky bit up ahead over here because we don't have the turbo mode on these, we can't really make the jump. So we could get Lara across by shimmying on the ledge over here. But we want to get the snowmobile on the other side, because we're going to have a great use for it soon. And as you might have noticed, there was a glittering third secret down there, and we're going to get it. But first things first, let's get that snowmobile across, and there is a rather awkward way to do it. Uh, by keeping... Oh, whoa, 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 Bad start. By keeping to the left. But holding on to the left is rather difficult. Lara, come on. Yep, yep, yep. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, okay. Brilliant. We, we did it. Now let's just drop down here. And don't get too comfortable with picking up your prize. As you can see, there's a whole tunnel out there. Just to piss you off. And not only is there a boulder, there's another boulder just after it. I can't tell you how many times I died because of that second boulder. I could sort of see the danger of the first one coming, but not the second one. It's really vicious. But our reward, even more Uzi clips. We can never have enough of these, we're gonna be using them pretty much till the end of the game. And I think we're also gonna be using them on the final boss. Well, Uzi's an M16 really. Uh, normally grenade launcher, but... Uh, I'm not sure if that wouldn't mess up with our final statistics because I'm not sure if that boss actually counts as a kill there's a peculiar way to kill him but yeah enough about that all in its due time okay oh and I'm so looking forward to this we finally got to get you get to use this lovely thing and not only on just any enemies but two scooter guys. This is going to be a, well, I'd say duel, but it's Lara versus two of them. So it's a bit more unfair than that. And that's it. <laughs> you just stand your ground and you keep shooting. For some reason you deal much more dam damage than they do whilst you're on the scooter. So yeah, th this is basically the easiest way I found to deal with those guys. And, uh, our way forward is barred with the block that we want to push in as much as we can. But yeah, as you can see, by shooting them, we got two kills. So these guys actually count as kills if you shoot them. And yeah, there are also going to be a couple of enemies that we want to shoot with a snowmobile, not run over. And they're going to trigger about right now, I think. Yep, they're shooting already, so let's make it back to the scooter and just mount it and, and, and shoot those bastards as soon as they pop out. Oh, brilliant. That should be two kills, 32. Oh, sweet. Everything goes according to the plan. So there's just one last enemy remaining. First, let's see if they had something to, you know, to pick up. But I don't think so. No, according to my notes, they did not. And I trust my notes. Okay, so let's have that M16 ready again so that we can snipe this bastard. It's kind of similar to the uh, 
theater in living quarters level where we snipe the shotgun wielding enemy pretty much the same deal now as you can see there's a huge lake in there and you can sort of climb down whilst I think taking some minor damage or maybe not even that but that would take ages that because we move the black uh, the block out of our way and we got a scooter here what we can do is something much more entertaining Geronimo boom oh my god and it just exploded and there's the snowmobile wreck I guess Lara finally left left her mark on the world if some archaeologists are gonna find in this wreck in, in centuries they're gonna wonder how the hell did this thing even appear here oh no it must be a proof of alien cultures maybe aliens told us language oh my god that wreck says it all okay sorry I'm being sarcastic now let's see the statistics screen hmm Okay, so that took us half an hour, not bad, we found all the secrets, killed all 33 enemies and according to my notes we also found all 31 items. And <laughs> yes, thanks to us using the um, the snowmobiles mounted with machine guns, we have rather poor accuracy. I mean, look at the ammunition we use and how much we actually hit with. One and a half health packs, that's not too good. But anyway, I had great fun, and I believe we're gonna have even more fun in the next level where Lara's gonna be a real dick. But <laughs> more about that later. I'll see you guys next time.